Hey there, this is Tom at Tom's Tech Show, and today we are talking about outage reports and what they mean. Howdy, this is Tom, Tom's Tech Show. Um, we, every once in a while, you know, it, it's inevitable in computing that things happen, things break, um, power goes out, UPS doesn't have enough power to hold it, uh, network goes out. Somebody trips over a wire. Uh, software has problems where things, you know, program code or something will will not work, will um, cause an error, cause an outage of some kind. Something you'll miss in monitoring, and then, you know, you don't see it, you don't get an alert that something is offline or down. And what do you do? I mean, granted, you, you fix it. Right, you get it back to being fixed, back to being working, what's going on. But then you have to do something else, which is how do we keep this from happening again? And one of those things, kind of a tool that helps us do that is a form. Some places will call it an RFO, which is a reason for outage. Um, um, other places will call it an RCA, which is a root cause analysis find out what happened. They're both kind of the same. They both do break down some things. So I have just kind of a sample form here that, that I use. So let's just kind of go over this really quick. Um, so if you have this form, and I'll make this template um, available for anybody to, to use. Um, this one's an RCA. You could very well have just called it an RFO. They're all, they're so similar. Um, usually it has, if you're gonna be making it a formal re report, like you're dealing with customers, or you're dealing with um, different company partners, um, things like that, then you want something with your company logo that's very official, that has your name and street address. If this is just for your own internal use, um, then you know just make up some type of form or something in, in Microsoft Word or Excel or something so that you can see it and track it and find out what's going on. Okay, first we have uh, the date. I put the date here, this is the date of the report, not the date of the incident, um, so that we know how long it took for the report to come out or last time it was edited um, and, uh, and updated. Um, then we put, first thing first is, what was impacted? What happened? You know, you were using this program and suddenly it stopped working. Um, the, all the users were trying to get on the internet and the internet provider had an outage or some downtime, um, a router or something broke. Uh, went bad, a switch failed, those kinds of things. And say, what what happened? Well, that's this is, if the switch fails, then users couldn't get on the internet, um, network resources, you know, you couldn't get to servers, you couldn't do things like that. So you kind of list those things about what was impacted and who saw it, like who saw what was going on. And then we put it in a timeline. So we break it down, okay, you know, this person called, said they couldn't get on the internet, then I went and checked the internet myself, and then I went and saw that, you know, you know, the lights on a switch or something were off. You know, kind of break it down, what, what happened, and kind of the sequence of events. Because these sequences, you know, you can go back later and say, is there a step or sequence that we can publish that will help us get to the root cause faster, right? So if you check 10 things and it ends up being, you know, it's always going to end up being the 10th one and all the time it's being the 10th one and it's that same switch or that same device that's having the problem, then let's go to that device or whatever that is first the next time this happens. Okay, so that's what we need to list, kind of list all the events out and put the time and, and so you can see how it progresses and, and who gets on phone calls and who gets into meetings and, and things like that so we can get just a timeline of, of how things went. And, and maybe there is a process or something that, that in a small business or a medium business that you can generate a better timeline, a better group of people, you know, to get on a phone call, on a meeting, you know, on a, like a go to meeting, uh, some shared web call or something that, that you can get onto sooner and gets the right people to it. So that timeline in it part is really important that we know how things happen and how things you know, occurred that we can kind of analyze, analyze, do an analysis later of, of what that is. So we're going to describe what went wrong. Okay, so if like this switch went down, you know, somebody uploaded bad program code, um, 
uh, the it's, if you're here in California, you're probably having a power outage right now, or you're being evacuated for a fire, or uh, it's really windy and your power lines are blowing over and telephone poles are falling down. So if you're in California, I mean, I guess the what went wrong is you live in California, um, but that can be remedied. So put down all the different things, you know, that happened, you know, this device failed, this thing failed. Uh, we didn't get an alert for a device and it went offline. So now we need, we brought it back online, but we need to, you know, we know we're gonna need to put an alert in. Uh, then we list who was involved. So we get the people that were involved. Like I said, this is gonna help in finding out who to get on phone calls faster um, to try and resolve issues. So your list, you know, we have our support person answer the first call or help desk or anything anything like that that we engaged a level one person to try and fix this and they couldn't do it then we went up the chain to level three you know whatever that is how many people are you know who knows how many people in your company level one through five may be the same person so but listing those people out helps you to see okay we got these people on the call this time two of these people weren't needed and we needed two other people so if we see a similar outage, that's going to help inform us who to get on a call to, you know, get that done in the future so we can get it fixed in the future. Okay, so then we have to describe what are we doing to fix it. The next section is what are we doing to fix it. So, and being fixing means what are we putting in place so that we don't have this outage again, right? So if, if a system... Um, is like a switch is bad and we have to reboot the switch or something to get it back working again. Well, we need to replace that switch. So we got it rebooted. Now it's back working, but the switch, we're not confident in it anymore. So we're ordering a replacement and then that's going to, you know, take so many days to get it in after being ordered. And then we'll have another planned outage to replace the switch. So all those things can be put in here for what we're doing to fix it. If it's a software problem, Maybe there's um, a server goes down every once in a while because servers go down and maybe we didn't get the alarm or the alert or maybe not the right people got the alert. So we could say we're, we're adding these alarms, we're adding these alerts, we're including more people, we're making it sent out urgent, you know, when the email goes out. So we do all these things to try and get it so that, you know, next time any of this, this incident happens or whatever happened during this outage, Right, either your either the outage doesn't happen again, or you're alerted immediately, and you can take immediate corrective action. You know right where to go to the problem and to fix it. So then down here at the bottom, I just have a table that we write out, list those actions that we're going to take, put the person that's going to be doing the 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 action, and what the target date is when when we think we're going to have this back fixed and have the corrective action, the new alert the switch replaced or whatever it is in you know in the system or replaced when whenever that's going to be getting all those things in place and just so we can have them listed here just to see you know we'll probably if you have a ticketing system um, like Jira or one of those things like a help desk system where you keep track of incidents and events then you would take these and take those actions and put them as incidents in Jira or your help desk software or whatever that is and assign them to those people so that you could track it again outside of just this form. Um, and then once those are done, then we take these forms, we put them away and we store them so that we can maybe review them at another meeting. You know, sometimes we'll have a, like a, a post crash, a post outage kind of triage uh, of what happened and maybe review a few of these. They're really important. I mean, we had, um, I was working at a company where um, the end of every month, on like the third uh, of the month, we had an employee who was selecting a report, running the report, and then leaving their desk and going to lunch. And this was a gigantic report, and it chewed up all kinds of CPU time and database time, and the system slowed down, and we got started getting phone calls that everything was slow. And we would start, every time we would create a new, at that company, they were called RFOs, Reason for Outage. 
And we su suddenly started seeing <clears throat> that the third of every month at noon, we were getting the same call. It only took like three months to finally figure out, okay, let's go find out what's going on. And we found the employee who was doing the report and then said, okay, let's, let's take this report. We'll schedule it at night when no one is here and no one will be impacted. You'll have your report for you first thing in the morning. So, you know, using that helped that employee and it helped everybody else because it wasn't slowing down the system by going and having these reports and then being able to just see some correlation. Maybe there's a timeline that keeps happening when there's slowdowns or, or outages and these reports help you find those. So I encourage anybody who's in charge of any kind of system who has, you know, a lot of hardware and software that they're monitoring, keeping track of, make sure you start getting all these reports down. Anytime something goes wrong, anytime there's an incident, get into the habit of creating either an RCA, whichever you want to choose, RCA, RFO, you know, I'm sure there's other acronyms out there, you know, uh, why did, why did this at WDTH, WDTH, why did this happen? You know, there's another one, WTH form. Yeah. So any one you want to make up, but just have this kind of information. What happened? Give us a timeline. What went wrong? What people were there? How do we fix it? And let's do something to make sure it doesn't happen. Okay. So that, that's what I do in all the companies that I've worked for is creating these forms and getting them there so that, you know, when there are these outages, it just helps track things. It just helps things to be smoother and it helps management too. It's like if you're a small company, then you can just give the, present these to the owner of the company and say, this is what happened. This is a complete report of what happened and what we're trying to do so it doesn't happen again. And then they'll understand that, you know, even if sometimes these outages do happen again, even with the extra steps that you take, but at least, you know, the owner of the company will see that, okay, you are taking action. You are understanding what's going on. You, you are trying to improve the situation. And eventually, you, you know, if you don't get it right the first time, probably the second time you'll go, okay, we need to add some more monitoring, maybe replace some hardware that we didn't before. <clears throat> Just being able to do that and show that to either like the owner or upper management or, you know, somebody higher up in the company that sees you doing this and making this effort just says a lot about what you're doing in your job and your quality that you're trying to keep and that you really care about the systems that they stay up and that, you know, all the employees in the company, you know, don't have any downtime because all that costs because just like if you have to replace a switch in a network, you know, switch six, $700 network switch, you know, real enterprise class network switch. Well, the time that that is down, that's a lot of people, you know, at their desk doing nothing. That's, that's going to cost way more than six or $700, right? To have people not doing anything. So that's why we do this stuff and keep it all, keep it all tracked and keep it all noted in our little reports. All right. Well, if you like this video or if you have any comments or anything or about what form you use, how you use it, uh, maybe there's more information that you track, then comment down below and share with other people. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you like any of the other things, then just subscribe to the channel and I will keep making these videos on whatever comes to mind and we'll keep going and share it together. All right. Well, thanks for watching this one. Take care.